Hello and welcome my Leo friends. This is Jennifer from Mystic Star. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and watching this video. This is going to be my group reading for Valentine's Day. Now, let's be honest, there's really only one kind of read that you can do for Valentine's Day, and that's a love reading. Now, I'm not going to be focusing in on twin flames or soulmate relationships. What I want to focus in on are those loving relationships in your life, how you can strengthen them and improve them, and then also, should you want, increase the amount of loving relationships you have in your life whether these be intimate relationships or friendships. So the decks I'm using for this reading, I'm using the Crystal Visions Tarot, the Crystal Unicorn Tarot, and the Angel Inspiration Oracle. Now, like always, there are links below to all these fantastic decks, so should they speak to you, you can go check them out for yourselves. All right, my Leo friends, let's see what the cards have to say. How can my Leo friends improve and increase the amount of love that they have in their lives? Okay, so we had a number of jumpers. The first one, the Three of Wands. Threes are about expression and growth. Wands about that passion and that creativity. The Three of Wands is a movement card. We've made your decisions. You know where this path is going to lead you. It's now using that courage and determination of that inner fire, your solar plexus, to push you forward. It's time to get moving on things. Then we had the High Priestess, the second card in the Major Arcana. She's a gatekeeper. She connects us into the higher vibrational energies. She usually has a scroll with her, and it's kind of tucked into her robes here, that's called Torah, which is the universal information, which is known as the scroll of knowledge. It carries that wisdom in, of the universe. At times we have great ability to connect in and receive the guidance. However, we've had challenges in the past that have strained this communication. We are not always clearly understanding what the high vibrational beings are trying to share with us, which kind of brings up some insecurities on moving forward. Part of us believes that's the right path. Other parts of us are either scared or uncertain whether this is the correct path for you. <laughs> Sorry. The Seven of Cups. It's sometimes really gratifying to have your cards validate what you just said. Sevens are a challenging number for us. They're usually victorious. The Seven of Cups talks about the seven deadly sins. Some of the, the seven deadly sins are very important for us right now. Other parts aren't. This is an illusion card. Because we're not always being able to connect in and we truly don't trust that connection, there's a lot of uncertainty onto this path. When we follow and connect into our third eye and we're able to understand where it is we need to go, that's when this, the Three of Wands really lights up for us. We're like, yeah, I gotta get going on this. However, there's a lot of you that still questions that connection and brings in that uncertainty. Then the Eight of Swords. Eights are about movement and manifestation, which is really hard to see in the Eight of Swords. The Swords are truth and knowledge. Now events have happened and sometimes things are positive and sometimes things are of a lower vibration and sometimes they're not so good. And it's in those situations and events that have 
connected into the fear and hurt that are penning us down, that are stopping us from gaining the insight of the High Priestess, that wisdom, that connection to the, the universal beings. It's also helping to aggravate that indecision and uncertainty because we don't feel like we're truly seeing and understanding. Literally, these past events, your ego is playing up on and holding you down, making you question everything that's happening, making you question the insight that most of it's valid. However, it brings up that uncertainty and scary. And when we look at uncertainty, that's when our ego really plays forward and it really adds to that instability. And then finally, the King of Cups. Kings are that fully developed personality of their suit. The cups about intuition and emotion. When we are able to fully control our responses to what's happening around us, it starts to remove some of these barriers and we start to connect in to that high priestess, which gives us that knowledge and guidance. Unfortunately, the uncertainty and our ego is able to outscream the king and the high priestess because the high priestess and the king, they are really the yin and yang of connection, that intuitive sight, if you will, because she is the most intuitive card. He has the most control and power of the emotion and the intuition. The yin and yang. You have the divine masculine and the divine feminine to make that creation that you're looking for. Now how we relate this to a relationship is that past relationships are causing uncertainty. They're really putting up barriers where there really shouldn't be barriers causing that uncertainty, those past experiences, causing you not to be able to see clearly and not be able to be guided to individuals that will be meaningful for you and are for your greater good. Rather, you're literally tying yourself to a pole. You're not being able to move forward. Some of you are even staying in relationships and friendships that aggravate and deepen those worries, those fears, and those heartaches. Rather than listening to your higher vibrational self to gain the insight and road out of there, you're staying. Because again, we've got that safety. The ego provides, quote unquote, a safe environment. Because when you have a situation that society or your ego deems safe, whether it is or isn't, you have a tendency to revert back to it. We see it with a lot of behaviors. When something is scary or hard to deal with, we revert back to those behaviors that were ingrained in us as children. Things like avoidance or reliance on others. Rather than standing up on our own two feet. We have the abilities and the, the determination and courage it's just standing up to our ego, to those societal beliefs, and doing what's in your best interest and higher good. Let's see what more we can add to this. How can my Leo friends embrace and incorporate these messages that Valentine's is bringing them? So shockingly enough, you guys have a number of jumpers. All right. So the first one, the magician. 
The first card in the Major Arcana, and it talks about your abilities and your skills, and how when you incorporate them into your everyday life, that's when the magic occurs. When we're able to step out of our ego. Yes, past experiences have occurred. Living in our past does not take us forward. It actually bars us from enjoying and finding fulfillment in today and in tomorrow. So using our natural skills and abilities, connecting them in to that universal wisdom and guidance to gain direction because we have the ability to go forward. It's just having that courage and determination to do it. Now I talked about the yin and yang here, the king and the, the high priestess. We do now have her, well, quote unquote, consort from the major arcana, the magician and the high priestess, the male and the female energies of that magic trusting in our intuition and our guidance so that we are able to use our skills and abilities to apply them to the insight and guidance to make those positive shifts to start to work towards our goal and into where it is we want to go then we had the eight of wands now i said before eights are about movement and manifestation now the wands are about that courage, that passion, that determination. The Eight of Wands talks about that amazing universal wisdom pretty much being shot down from the heavens towards you. Really emphasizing that ability to move forward and that need to move forward. We need to shift out of the Eight of Swords. We may not be able to deal with those past experiences right now, However, acknowledging those past experiences and acknowledging the ego for what it's playing and tricking you into will help in this movement. When we acknowledge it and say, look, I'm not going to be bound down by my ego. There's so much more I can do and there's so much more I want to achieve in my life to find that fulfilling and meaningful experience than to be bogged down by past. Now we do have double eights, the wands and the swords. In angel messages, when you're looking at that multiple eight, the angels are telling you this is a time to expand your limits, that abundance awaits you. That's very clear here. We need to take hold and use our skills and abilities. Taking control, goes back to the King of Cups, of situations so that you can make clear determinations. How can you make these relationships more meaningful? Are these relationships balanced? That's another piece. We've got a couple eights. So we're looking at balance. We've got the magician and the high priestess, that balance. Balance is going to be key. Your relationships should be high vibrational and should be balanced. No one controlling the relationships. No one micromanaging. No one having more power or authority over one another. Rather, both individuals giving and receiving in harmony. Then we had the Ace of Cups. When we embrace this abundance and our abilities, when we embrace our skills and our abilities, we start to raise our vibration. That abundance becomes more and more clear. We literally have the Holy Grail here. We need the courage and determination to be able to take hold of it. This is the cup from the seven deadly sins that we need that's going to take us forward. And it's forward that we need to focus on rather than backwards. And then finally, the Six of Pentacles. Sixes are about balance and harmony. Pentacles about growth and abundance. It's the first pentacle we've seen. However, it's very important. Like I said, balance is key. And that's what the Six of Pentacles talks about, that balance. 
not only balancing our energies and our resources within ourselves and our relationships, but making sure that we're receiving back for what we're giving. That balance will be necessary when one person holds more power or is receiving more from a relationship on an ongoing basis, you start to de deplete you and you start to feel really penned in and stuck. All right, let's see what further guidance the angels have for us. What further guidance do you have for my real friends regarding their relationships? and love. Okay. The first jumper. Seek within. We know innately it's something that we've kind of known for a while, those relationships that we need to let go of. Those pieces in our lives that are holding us back. Those relationships that we really need to nurture because they are so life-giving. The answers lie within us. What is working for us and what is sharing that amazing, loving, nurturing energy and what is sucking us dry? Gratitude. Being grateful for all the lessons that the individuals in our lives have shared with us, whether they be of high vibration or lessons that were learned the hard way. Being grateful for those who've helped teach us, helped guide us to this point, because whether it be positive or of a low vibration, we've still managed to get where we are right now. Being grateful for all that has been offered to us and being grateful that this is not where we end off. We have more to do. We have more to achieve, more fulfilling and positive high vibrational aspects in our lives. The more we focus in on this positive high vibrational energy, the more we're gonna get it back the more we're going to be able to seek and understand the guidance we're looking for. And then finally, kindness. Kindness to self. Kindness to those individuals who have been with you through the ups and downs, who have seen you at your best and seen you at your most challenging and still support and love you for who you are. That kindness, that high vibrational loving energy goes a long way. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and you're able to gain some insight and direction into what Valentine's Day holds for you and how to go forward with this loving energy. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest content. I have a lot more amazing videos coming up in the next couple of weeks and months. The best way to stay connected and not miss any of the insight and healing is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page with many tiers and lots of perks. In some of the tiers, the perks are private readings and healings with myself. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my Leo friends.